Welcome back to CS201 Walkthroughs. My name is Lukash, and today we're going to be talking about representing a Turing machine in Racket. So I recommend that you go and watch the last video on Turing machines if you haven't, so you have some basic understanding of what a Turing machine is. Um, the first thing that I think is important to understand here is what a struct in Racket does. So here, this I've just copied this line from the homework. It says struct INS, which stands for instruction has a CST or a current state, a CSY or a current symbol, an NST or a new state, and an NSY or a new symbol, as well as a direction to move. So this is these, these match up. When you make an instruction, an INS, the first part of it will be the CST, second part will be the CSY, third part will be the NST, etc. You don't have to declare that. You don't have to say hey, this is the, the current state. So say I wanted to make an instruction myself. I'll, I could do it. I could do something like define ins1 to be ins q1, 0, q2, or we'll say 3, 1, r. That was easy, right? So you'll notice that the way I made an instruction, the way I said hey, what I'm putting here is going to be an instruction as defined above was I put INS at the beginning, the name of the struct. Right? I'll run it. I'll show you that this worked. I'll type INS1 below, and it prints out that instruction. Now we need to understand how you access elements of an instruction. So if I wanted to ask, like, what is the current state of INS1? Right? How would I do that? Well, so when we define these um, these elements of an INS, it allows us to access them uh, in the following format. So we put INS dash element we want to access, and then the name of a specific instruction. This is a little clunky. Name of a specific instruction. So this will. I'll give you an example. If I want get the current state from INS1. I would do that with INS CST for current state and then INS1. That would get me the current state from the instruction that is INS1. It needs this information because it needs to know hey what, what type of struct am I looking into? It needs this information so it knows what position in the struct to get and then it needs a specific instruction to look at. Some people will just put INS CST. This doesn't work because it doesn't know, you know, this is a procedure for getting a, a current state from an instruction. This has no instruction itself, so you need a specific INS to get it from. I'll show you that this works just for fun. If I copy this down into my terminal or REPL, it'll give me Q1, the current state of my INS1. So then we can see pretty easily, uh, the, it logically follows that in this defined TM1, all it is is a list of instructions, a list of these instruction structs. So say we wanted to, you know, get the, we'll get the new state from the, I don't know, how about the third instruction, right? So I can do something like, well, since TM1 is a list, we've worked with list before, right? So how about I just take the car of the cutter of the cutter of TM1, right? So this will remove the first and then remove the second list. Then this will, uh, sorry, the first and second instructions. And then this will get the third one. Okay. And then this will give me an instruction. And then from that instruction, I said I wanted the, what, the new symbol. So this will give me the new symbol from the instruction I get when I car cutter cutter tm1 which is blank All right okay the same is true of the conf struct conf or config but conf is the important technical name of the struct uh, so this has a current state a left tape a current symbol and a right tape so if you remember from our last video we represented this as one tape but in Racket, we're going to separate it based on where the head is. 
So the head, okay, let's look at this config one here. Notice again that they make a config by putting the name of the struct um, after an open parenthesis. So you can think of this as um, a, a procedure for creating something, right? Here, this defines we're making a conf, uh, a conf, a conf out of these elements. Okay. So here's our tape that before we represented uh, just with a continuous string of digits. It has zeros in the left tape, a one, and then a one in the right tape. So the one is the current symbol where the head is pointing. Um, and then we assume that on either side it is full of blanks. So I've written down some rules of racket Turing machines that apply to how we're going to represent them. And the first one I wrote, oh wow, my numbering's a little off. The first one I wrote is that tapes are assumed to have infinite blanks on each side. So for example, if I had to go to the right a whole bunch, you know, I was I, I want to move my head over to the right. I had a bunch of instructions with this right command at the end. Then maybe I would end up, I would eventually put this one into the middle. So I would move this one here over. I would say, okay, now that one is in the left tape. This one from over here is in the middle. And then there's nothing in the right tape after I shift to the right once. After I shift to the right again, though, we know that this represents infinite blanks. So what shifting to the right actually does is it puts a blank in the middle. If I were to shift to the right again, it would move that blank into the left tape, and there would still be a blank in the middle because we're assuming that there are infinite blanks here. It would be the same as if there were infinite blanks here. If I shift right again, one blank will go there, another blank will just replace the blank in the middle, etc. All right, I'm going to control Z that it's for testing purposes. Okay. Rule number two: tapes must be normalized and have, all right, have extra blanks removed. The definition of an extra blank is uh, at the right end of the right tape or the left end of the left tape. I'll write that in. The right end of the right tape or the left end of the left tape. Okay. So for example here, these blanks are not necessary. This would represent the exact same tape as this. However, if I had something like this, these blanks are no longer at the right end of the right tape. These blanks are necessary to show, well, there are two spaces between this zero and this one. So I can't remove these blanks. However, so this is normalized. This is considered normalized because there are no blanks at the left end of the left tape or the right end of the right tape. If I were to do this, back to what it was before, this is not normalized. The correct normalized configuration would be this, without those blanks shown. Okay, rule number three, we shift left, as I showed before, by moving the current symbol, so the middle one, into the right tape. Okay, so if I'm shifting my head to the left, this becomes the new head, this goes into the right tape, and uh, yeah, so the, the current symbol becomes the rightmost of the left tape. and the, this is moved into the other one. Yeah, vice versa, uh, vice versa for shifting to the right, the current symbol will move into the left tape, and the leftmost symbol of the right tape will move into the current symbol. Okay, that's a little bit, a little bit confusing, but I think we got it. A Turing machine is halted when I look up, which is a function you're going to be writing, fails to find an appropriate instruction. So we said this in our last video. We said if there are no instructions for a particular state then that's considered a halt state. So for example, here, you can see Q3 has no instructions. There's only instructions for Q1, Q2. Once it hits Q3, this Turing machine will halt. It won't know what to do, it'll stop, and nothing else will happen, right? So when we write our halted procedure later, we have to take that into consideration. So to implement this functionality, uh, your, your goal here is to create a sort of simulator where you can pass it in Turing machine like this, a configuration like this, and have it march through like we did in the last video. March through the steps and end up and say this is what your final tape would look like and this is what your final state would be. Okay, to do that we have some procedures that are outlined in the homework document. I'm going to kind of run over how to approach. Uh, and I think a lot of it will kind of come from this information about structs that we talked about earlier. 
So the first one is <clears throat> is iMatch. iMatch takes in a state and a symbol and an instruction. And your goal is to say, hey, do this state and symbol match the current state and symbol of this instruction? So by match, I guess what I'm really indicating you should use is the equal operator, right? Equal tells you whether things are, are the same in Racket. And then to get the state, the current state from an instruction, you use ins cst of instruction name. And to get the current symbol, you use ins csy of the instruction name. So all you have to do is really ask if those are equal for uh, the instruction that you were passed and the state and symbol you were passed. This will help you with ilookup. This is good to get used to because lookup functions we're going to be using a few times in this class. The purpose of ilookup is to take a TM, a Turing machine, which remember we said, remember, Turing machines in Racket are just a list of instructions. So your goal is to either either find and output a matching instruction to your input state and symbol or output false. So this is done you know with with list recursion that we talked about for homework one list recursion, right? All you have to do is cutter your way through each time checking I match on the car of the list of instructions, right? If your state and symbol match the car of the list of instructions, then you just print out the car of the list of instructions. You output that instruction. If it doesn't, you keep going, you keep cuttering until you reach an empty list. When you've reached an empty list, you know that you're, you don't have any instructions that match your state and symbol, and you can output false. Normalize gets a little bit trickier because <clears throat> we have to deal with those, those pesky blanks, right? So there are a few scenarios here we have to take into consideration. Um, I think the easiest way to do this may be easiest way to write a function that removes blanks from the beginning of a list. We'll say uh, write a helper function, a recursive, ooh, recursive helper function that removes blanks from the beginning of a list. Okay, so then you can just use this on the left list. Remember above we said uh, Blanks need to be removed if they're at the right end of the right tape or left end of the left tape. Never if they're in the current symbol, right? Because we need to know what the head is pointing at to follow instructions properly. Okay, so for the left tape, we just have to run this helper. It'll remove all the blanks from the left side of the left tape. The right tape, we probably have to find some way to apply this helper um, to remove blanks at the end. Reverse. All right. For halted. Again, how do we define halted above? We said a Turing machine is halted if there are no instructions that match the current state and the current symbol, both of them. So, I'll check. You know, my hint will be use I lookup. Hint, another double hint, hint two, be careful about what I look up returns, not true or false. Remember, it never outputs true, so you should not be using I look up to return true or false. It's just a little hint. For change state and write symbol, uh, they're, they're similar, so I'll keep them together. These again, um, input is, uh, they, they take a config as input, input a config, and their output 
output is a config. Which means we have to remember how to make a config, right? So make a config with putting conf and then four things. Four things? Yeah, right? And they have to represent, they have to be in the correct order. But this is how you make a config. So the real question is how do we get each of these parts of the config? to be correct. Same thing with normalize, I guess, right? It takes a config, outputs a config. You have to make sure that each of these parts is correct. I'll give you uh, like I'll, I'll give you a hint. So say for change state, right? All we're changing there is the current uh, is, is the state, is this part right here. So what's gonna happen to the current symbol? Well it's gonna stay the current symbol, right? So how do we get the current symbol? Well it's conf CST, right? Getting the current symbol from the conf of config. Does that make sense? I'll erase that before too many people see. Giving such such clear hints. Alright. So now we've we've written change state, write symbol, normalize, halted, I look up all of these things. Uh, let's think back to when we were you know kind of playing with that Turing machine in the, in the PowerPoint document. Um, and simulating it by hand. So what did we do? You know, we first look, uh, first look up an instruction, right? If there's no matching instruction, you know what to do. Let's put a winking face. If there is, then you need to use change state. Uh, right symbol normalize and I think that's it right change state change state. oh is there a shift change state change symbol or right symbol normalize okay. uh, I think you might have to do something to shift to make sure that you have the make the right and left tapes correct. All right. So remember how we discussed shifting above. Shifting is a little bit tough because sometimes you have to add in blanks. Remember for our, from our example up here, say I keep shifting to the, say, oh, for this one we said if I keep shifting to the right, eventually we're going to put both of those ones in here. We're going to have a blank here, and we're going to say, what are we going to do next? Well, to shift to the right again, we're going to have to put a blank here and say, okay, put another blank here, even though there's not something in here to put into the current state, uh, sorry, the current symbol. Okay, so there are going to be some if statements or conditions gonna have to use if or con to check if the right left tapes are empty depending on which way you shift all right hopefully this has given you some idea of how to approach making your simulator um, for the Turing machine in homework 3 if you have any questions of course come into office hours email the CS201 help email or a post on Piazza will be happy to help. And thank you for watching this video walkthrough.